A boy standing on the side of a steel lake picks up a stone, a flat stone, throws it horizontally across the water. The stone flies 30 meters through the air, then bounces several times across the surface of the water before finally coming to rest and sinking. The distance d in meters that the stone travels after each bounce. You can see they underlined and also made it in bold after each bounce because that's very important is your value for n on the water is given by this equation. So we have dn is equals to 18 half to the power of n minus 1. Now it says for the first question how far as the stone travels as it hits the water for the tall time. So if we kind of draw something to kind of show this, we could say that this person threw a stone and he hits the water after 30 meters. Okay? So we need to find out, this is the first time he's going to hit the water. We need to find out how far this stone will travel after I hit it. One, two, then three. Now the top part here, this is your T1. And this one here, you regard it as your T2. So the D represents the distance traveled after each bounce. So since this is the first bounce, this distance here is your T1. And the second bounce, this distance after the second bounce is your T2. Okay, then it hits the water again the third time. Okay, so we need to find this. All we just need to do is substitute this into the formula real quick. So we are saying 18 half. Then since for the first bounce, I'll make n equals to 1. Simplifying this, this would give you 18. And for the second bounce, we'll do the same thing. We have 2 minus 1. And that there will be 18 times half which is 9 okay so we have t1 to be 18 and we also have t2 to be 9 so that means this distance under here is 18 and the distance under here is 9 okay so since they want how far this stone is going to travel all i just need to do is add the original distance it traveled before the first bout which is 30 meters plus 18 plus 9 and I will give you 57. So this one here is 57 meters. The stone is going to travel for 57 meters. Okay. Then let's get to B. B says between which two bounces does the stone travel a distance of 56,25? So before we go into the calculation of this, one thing you need to understand here is you can see this is the first bounce that is the second bounce that is the third bounce you can see that t1 is between one the first bounce and the second bounce t2 is between the second bounce and the third bounce and it can go so on and so forth so if i get whatever value that will tell me that will give me an idea of between which bounces is going to be okay the formula we had was dn okay, i don't know why i use t here but it said dn it also works the same as tn but let's be consistent so we're going to use dn is equals to 18 times half and this is negative one okay now we also notice in our question even from this previous answer that the unit we've been working with is in meters and converting this to meters means dividing by a hundred and that they will give you 0, 0,5625. Okay, so now the distance traveled is 0, 0,5625. Now this here is equals to 18 times half, and we are trying to find the n. Okay, so first thing we'll do, we divide by 18 real quick. So 0, 0,5625 divided by 18. And that will give you 1 over 32. So this here is 1 over 32 is equals to 1 over 2 to the power of n minus 1. Now I can rewrite this 1 over 32 in terms of exponents. And this is what I'll get. Right? 
1 over 2 to the power of 5 is the same thing as 1 over 32, which is half to the power of n minus 1. So from here, we can just say that since the bases are the same, we can equate the power. So it means n minus 1 is equal to 5, so n is equal to 6. Okay, so if your n is equal to 6, we know from what we talked about here that for t1, it is between the first and the second. For t2, it is between the second and the third, right? So we say it does this between the sixth and the seventh bounds, okay? That's when it travels a distance of 56,25 centimeter. That's it for B. So C wants us to find the total distance traveled by the stone before it sinks. Now, the first thing we write down is our equation, right? Our equation is dn is equals to 18 half n minus 1. Now, this here kind of reminds you of this. And the reason why I'm drawing comparison with this is that we understand that A is our first term, R is our common difference, N is the number of terms and all that. So for this sort of question here, we understand that the first term is 18. And we kind of did that in the previous question, so we're absolutely right about this. And our R would be 1 over 2. It's quite important for you to know this. Now one thing that is also special about this R is that this R falls between negative 1 and 1. And because it falls between negative 1 and 1, it is a convergent series. Is a series that keeps on getting smaller and smaller and smaller until infinity. So now because it's between negative 1 and 1, we can say that the distance between our stone we keep on reducing. And the only way to capture this is by using some to infinity. So since it's not going to stop until it finally sinks, we can use this to try to figure out how long will it take? What is the total possible distance that you could get? So in this here, I can say this is 18 over 1 minus half. And putting this in the calculator real quick. 18, 1. Okay, which is 36. So now this here is the total distance that our stone is going to move before it sinks after the first bounce. But from the original question, we understood that the stone first of all moved a distance of 30 meters before that first bounce. So we need to add that 30 to this. So in so doing, the total distance is going to travel before it sinks would be a total of 66 meters. That's it.